Money, cash, woes. Dim fundraising is shaking up the race. Insta what? Insta who? Text messages raise reasonable doubts about Trump's foreign policy. I'm Jamal Simmons. I'm kind of feeling Jay-Z today, and here's why you should care. We're rounding out the 2020 Democratic fundraising numbers for the third quarter halls. The big numbers are in, and former Vice President Joe Biden came in fourth place, raising a yawn-worthy $15 million. Elizabeth Warren just announced her numbers today, bringing in $24.6 million. That's just a hair behind Bernie Sanders, who has the biggest Q3 haul for 2020 Dems at $25 million. Get better, Bernie. The mayor of South Bend, Pete Buttigieg, brought in $19 million, and Senator Kamala Harris has 11.6. Entrepreneur Andrew Yang, the first-time candidate, he pulled in an impressive $10 million, making him the biggest positive surprise to come out of Q3. Now, here's why you should care. A two-term vice president of the United States was outraised by the mayor of South Bend, Indiana. And he came in with just a few million dollars more than the first-time presidential candidate, the tech entrepreneur, Andrew Yang. Shouldn't the front runner of the 2020 Democratic race be pulling in more cash, or at least be further ahead? It suggests that Biden's support is waning, even among the donors who are his base. Also, Biden has reportedly had a tough time raising money on the internet. They just soaked up a lot of their Facebook spending. The two progressive candidates in the race are just simply killing the game in donations and momentum, especially Elizabeth Warren. The Warren campaign said the Massachusetts senator gained 300,000 new donors in Q3 alone, and we've seen her poll numbers going up too. It seems this year that establishment candidates, they just aren't the jam when it comes to raising money. Instagram is hoping to curb cyberbullying with a new feature on its app called Restrict. Restrict was rolled out this week and users who experience cyber abuse can now filter through someone's negative comments on photos and messages by restricting their activity on other pages. So this is how it works. Say someone leaves a nasty comment on your picture or sends a nasty DM. You can preview or not, and then you can choose to restrict the person's comment by simply changing the privacy settings for that specific user. Without your approval, the comments will never be seen by anyone but you and the bully, and he or she will be none the wiser. You may be thinking, why not just block them? In an interview with NPR, Instagram's Adam Masseri said in the early stages of Restrict's development, teenagers reported that blocking often made things worse for them because it aggravated the bully. And simply blocking a bully doesn't allow them to see what he or she is up to, to be able to avoid a confrontation in person. Restrict is currently available for some English-speaking users, but because of the positive impact, Instagram said the feature will be available globally. Now, why you should care, bullying is a general problem. And with social media embedded in our everyday lives, cyberbullying numbers are up. A 2018 Pew Research study found that the majority of teenagers experienced cyberbullying, 59% to be exact. Just this past week, a teenager in Tennessee took his own life after schoolmates unveiled personal messages between him and another boy, outing him on Instagram and Snapchat. He shot himself hours after. This is an isolated case, and sadly, it's probably not the last one. But it is reassuring to know that some of these social media giants are taking over some of the responsibilities to help stop cyber bullies. I wonder if YouTube will introduce such a feature. Hmm. News on impeachment is traveling a mile a minute, so we're here for you. Here is the latest on the impeachment inquiry. Republicans are scrambling to come up with a way to defend President Trump. What is the plan? A vote to formally condemn Congressman Adam Schiff. Now, this move won't get approval from the Democratic-run House, but it is backed up by GOP leaders. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy and House Minority Whip Steve Scalise stand with President Trump. According to Politico, Scalise said they are going to use the tools they have in the minority and fight to get the truth out holding Schiff accountable for his falsehood. Yesterday, text messages between U.S. diplomats and a senior Ukrainian aide were released. The texts show how a possible Ukrainian investigation into the 2016 election was linked to a desired meeting between Ukrainian President Zelensky and Trump. The texts also highlight how the president's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, was tied to U.S. policy on Ukraine and was involved in setting up the phone call between President Trump and Zelensky. That happened on July 25th. Now, here's why you should care. The president and his allies are pushing back against the Democrats. The water they're in is very dicey, though, as the president continues to give ammunition to his opponents with some of his live remarks, and more information leaks out of the government. 
So far, there's been no clear evidence of wrongdoing by either Biden, but people raise real questions about how Hunter Biden got such large fees. Will any of this matter in the end? You tell us. Thanks for watching Hill TV on YouTube. Be sure to click subscribe and hit the bell so you know when we post new videos and head to thehill.com for all the latest political news.